Are we ready? We have. I think, I think so. We're ready. Uh, we have no agenda. We yeah. just have whatever comes out of our whatever comes out of our mouths for the next sixty minutes, and um, that's usually what happens anyway. So we Guns. are. <laughs> Beto. Guns. Beto. Beto. Robert Francis. Life. We've uh, we're recording this. Yes. Okay. We appear yes, to be we are in the cloud. We're, we're the recording. Cloud. Ro Last Robert, week. Robert Fr Robert Francis Beta Mail. Yes. <laughs> Beta <laughs> Mail. Last week we had some technical difficulties and we recorded an excellent hour of content that you'll have to take our word because it got lost somewhere in the universe and we have no idea where it is. So uh, this yeah. week we are hoping for better results. Um, like the first two weeks that we did this. And so this is technically week four, but now it's week three. So yes, fingers crossed. All right, so we didn't really start an agenda. Uh, we have just plenty of things to talk about. I, I got a couple ideas. One of the first things I wanted to start with was something I'm looking for. Guns? Uh, guns, no, we'll get to guns. This is, this is almost as bad. Um, Elizabeth Warren tweeted this week, I believe it was on the 6th of September, that on my first day as president, I will sign an executive order that puts a total moratorium on all new fossil fuel leases for drilling offshore and on public lands, and I will ban fracking everywhere. So our buddies at the conservative treehouse did a really nice job of coming up with a list of the 10 worst horrible things that will happen as a result of this policy from day one. And uh, I just wanted to kind of go through a few of them and, and get your thoughts and reactions on them. Obviously, the biggest problem is, is that right now, we've got our own strategic reserve in the ground because we can turn on our fracking and turn off our fracking whenever we want. So we have lots of oil and gas and we are now the global producer, leading global producer of these fuels. And that has afforded us uh, strategic independence and military independence um, and has definitely helped us as far as you know the issues we used to have uh, with reliance on people who hate us for energy that we would need to defend ourselves if they were to attack us. So uh, it has also brought down the price of gas. We've written repeatedly uh, over the last year and a half about how despite things that have happened in the Middle East with Syria and most recently with Iran, the price of gasoline has barely budged. It has been somewhere between $2.29 a gallon and $2.69 a gallon for regular. And the whole time we've had ships being seized and drones being downed and sabers being rattled. And the reason that price hasn't changed is because of fracking. Elizabeth Warren, the woman with the plan, says, well, my first move is going to be to end that. We're not going to frack anymore. So what does that do? Well, here's a quick list of some of the things at Conservative Treehouse. It immediately hands Vladimir Putin hundreds of billions worth of enhanced Russian energy exports. Oh, yeah, because they really need that money. It supports the regime in Venezuela. Remember that guy, the, Syria, uh, the socialist dictator? Uh, it expands the influence of China um, and their investments in Russian energy, by the way, of which they apparently have a significant sum. It immediately helps the Iranian economy and enhances their stranglehold on power. Geez, I haven't gotten to anybody who's really a friend of ours yet, but that would hurt Saudi Arabia, uh, Arabia Egypt, Israel, and Libya. Not all allies necessarily, but still people who are on our side versus the Iranian side. Uh, it would return U.S. policy and strategy back to a dependence, a position of dependence on OPEC, which I just covered briefly. It would raise the cost of everything, not the least of which is gas, heating oil, heating fuel. Uh, it would destroy American wages. It would uh, set us. It would set us back in industrial manufacturing. It would drive jobs out of the U.S. to Mexico and Asia. It would also drive up electricity prices would raise the price of gasoline, as they point out, to Obama-era rates when it was up around $5 a gallon by design. And uh, it'll also drive the cost of transportation up. So every good in the world that comes to the U.S. and has to be driven by a truck or on a train or in a plane to get somewhere will cost more. And consumers, especially low-income people and we'll say minorities because that's how the Democrats would spin it, will lose a significant chunk of money that they may not even have because they've lost their jobs because on day one, Elizabeth Warren turned us into a country of dependence. Your thoughts? She hates Lots poor of people. Thoughts. <laughs> okay. 
Well, um, they always hate poor people when they tax <laughs> liquor, when they tax cigarettes, when they make it more expensive to do basic stuff that everybody has to do instead of luxury <laughs> stuff that some of us have to do. They are they hate poor people. But worse than that, you know, we have we, we worry about the balance of payments, about China, about trade, about tariffs. But, you know, the biggest imbalance of trade was oil imports, which were running, if I'm not mistaken, around $700 billion a year in the late 80s and 90s and early 2000s. You know, and they kept saying, well, we have to use less oil. We have to become less dependent. Uh, Donald Trump had a different idea, just like Sarah Palin. Why don't we produce our own? Then we don't give a damn. And meanwhile, if we hand back control of the production to the people that don't like us very much, as Steve pointed out, never mind Vladimir Putin, those nice Saudis that will cheerfully hold hands with our oil drilling presidents or uh, appear to make nice with us, finance terrorism. And if we don't give them the money, they can't finance as much. True. But I also look at it from a governmental standpoint. Um, I think it's quite clear most of this, the, uh, the members of this pack of progressives would love to be able to put us back in the pickle. But I look at it as the totalitarian mask is coming out. We are supposed to have a constitutional republic in which those that we elect are supposed to represent us. The Democrat progressive socialists have move, are rapidly moving, if haven't already arrived, at representing, to governing, to ruling. And there are differences between those three states of being. She can't do what she claims that she can do by executive order, but she's certainly playing to the leftmost part of her party, given that the uh, primaries will be coming up pretty soon. She can't, she can stop what's going on on public lands, but if leases have already been let offshore, she can't immediately take those out, but she can't stop and just unilaterally say no more fracking, period. It's the same thing with a lot of her other programs. It's the same thing with a lot of these. Um, they want to be the biggest man on campus, but they don't care how they get there or what they're going to do once they get there, other than saying, say, look, I gave you free stuff without ever saying, yeah, and you're going to pay for it anyways. Your turn, Steve. Indeed. I, I was unmuting me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one more thought on Elizabeth Warren before we go. It, uh, it's obvious that she and Bernie are splitting the same voters in the Democrat pre-primary polling. So uh, I don't see Bernie dropping out, and I certainly don't see Liz Warren dropping out. Uh, Biden, if this keeps up, will probably win the nomination because the real socialists, you know, because he's still won, but he's, you know, he's Joe Biden. Uh, the real socialists are splitting the hardcore left vote, leaving everybody else who might vote in a Democrat primary to vote for Biden, which means by default, he would probably win uh, most of the contests. If neither of them were to drop out, uh, I think Biden probably still has a pretty good lock on it, even though he's a total bumbling idiot. And if he doesn't drop dead, it's probably his. However, I think Warren is more popular among the nutbag leftist socialists than Bernie Sanders is. She's a little bit younger than he is. She's a woman. Um, she's good at lying. They like that. And uh, so what do you think? Do you think if, well, imagine if Bernie dropped out, would, would Warren suck it all up and just take the nomination? Um, on, I don't get... think so. I, I really don't, I don't agree necessarily that um, Mr. I don't know what I said yesterday is uh, Joe Biden is actually going to last long enough. While I think Julian Castro, the little guy on the soapbox behind the podium, um, tried to go after Biden the way that he did by saying, you can't even remember anything, trying to bring up the nuance of this guy's senile. We're used to Joe Biden gas, but they are getting worse. And while he did show, I actually, one of the few who actually watched the entire debate, and it's clear that while he ha uh, Biden had more fight in him than the last one, um, 
He's not the Biden that I remember of years ago. He's, he's lost his fastball. He's rapidly losing the curveball. The only thing he's got left now is the screwball. I uh, don't necessarily agree that he's going to be all there because, let's face it, when you, I wish to respect my elders, and he certainly is that at this point, but he, I think he's starting to lose it. And this is not the kind of person I think that the young progressives are going to willingly take on. And remember, the people in both primaries, Republican and Democrat, are those that are the hardcore of each party. And they're going to be evaluating what he says. And given the the crowds that are assembling for both um, of his two other rivals, the Indian and the uh, Moscow living one, um, I'm not so sure that he's he'll have enough to split the vote. Split the vote. That's, that's certainly going to be interesting. Yeah, that, that's going to be interesting. You know, the question is whether Biden gets to the finish line with all of his parts still attached. He had an eyeball trying to jump out. Uh, his arms may fly off if he waves them around or grabs hold of the wrong thing. I, I mean, he's in pretty poor shape. And then he's offering to wrestle with journalists who think he may not be fit enough. Uh, that would be a sight to see, or, or maybe not. Um, the guy's completely delusional about his abilities, and it's a shame. You know, whether you call his service honorable or not, he served a long time in public. He's been vice president, and he should have hung it up when he was at the pinnacle of his career, but he decided to reach higher and is in danger of missing the, the jump altogether. Liz Warren, I do agree, absolutely appeals to the young, uh, rabid leftists. You'll recall the video I posted from Nutroots 2014, where she had him jumping up and down in the audience, waving Liz for president signs back then. So, so it's clear she's capturing the hardcore and the young. The question is, has Bernie flamed out? Is he too wild, too white, and too old uh, for those same hardcore young leftists? Rock TV.